Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, lend me your ear. Hi, this is your host Q, live and direct from Psyche Studio, Kochi. Hope you all are having a good time. Welcome to the ground breaking, where we sit down with creatives, design, and business pioneers to discuss their journeys, process, and approach. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, consider subscribing. Also, check out our website. We are working on a newsletter and a slowly growing design community on Discord, where we have weekly design live session every Saturday, where we learn something new. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, give us ratings. It helps us reach a wider audience, and also because we are doing one episode a week. We always value feedback from our listeners, so feel free to get in touch with any comments or questions. You can shoot us a mail mentioned in the podcast description. For this episode of the podcast, we have Devar, a copywriter and advertising strategist, works at the Talented. We talked about his journey and insights into the ever-changing world of copywriting. We discussed the challenges of balancing unsexy work with the sexy stuff. We also delved into the strategy of making it in the advertising world and the role of social media beyond just selling your product. They were talked about his passion for watching movies and how it led him to choose advertising as a career after being inspired by the TV series Mad Men. Mad, 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 Mad. Hello, hello, they work. How's it going? All good, all good. It's been an exciting week, and uh, you know, Sunday days just got better. Yeah. What does your usual Sunday look like? Uh so so I like the uh, Bombay, the city. I have to leave it very soon, which is very sad. But usually, I go to uh, like I keep Sunday for reading. I keep uh, Saturday for party. Uh, so <laughs> so that's yeah. I, uh, I, if I can read, if I can go to the cinema, if I can meet some friends, that's how usually Sunday looks like. Yeah. And are you shifting cities? I know about that. You you know shifted to a different job. Uh, uh, congrats for that. I hope it's treating you well. Yeah. Uh, so, but the, is it like related to the job that you have to shift places? Uh yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the company gave us a choice that I can stay in Bombay and work too. But uh, you know, one of the reasons that I joined, uh, you know, talented is because of the people that they work there. And if uh, like my main goal was to you know learn from them and work side by side, uh, so so for that I I I it's my choice to go and you know you go where the work is. <laughs> yeah, you make sure. Uh, yeah, I think in our last call in our catch up call also you uh, you talked about uh, uh, you know being around the team and you know uh, uh, you know creating good work. So uh, you you've always been in that you you always believe in that uh, uh, on site uh, working team scenario where all of you and I are the brainstorming together and how how does it like different from maybe working remotely because most of the people these days even even as a as a as a as an agency founder I uh, I you know I've been I I have that difficulty of finding nice people who who wants to come you know and work. So, uh, what what do you think about that? Uh so I have worked an entire year work from home, right? Um, then between I worked almost uh, eight nine months from office. Now I'm working from home. Uh, then I'll go back to working from office again. Uh, what what I prefer is a hybrid situation, which talented is we have to go twice or thrice uh, to the office, and rest of the days we can work from home. Uh, what it helps with it is basically office is great when it comes to brainstorming. Uh, you know, when we when we get a difficult brief, um, because because advertising writing itself can be a very lonely job. To be very honest, it's just you thinking. Uh, you know, uh, and you're not sure that if if it's gonna uh, go through. You're not sure how good it is. So you need people around to discuss it with you. You need approvals. You also need disapprovals. So for that, office setup is amazing. But once you once you're done with the brainstorming, once you have a direction, now you need to flesh it out. So now you have to go back to that corner of the room where you sit and think and do the actual writing exercise, right? So for that, you need to be alone because writing is a lonely job for a reason, right? Uh, so I prefer two days to office or three days to office, and the next two days or next three days, 
uh, sit at home and flesh it out. So that has worked the best for me. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so let, let's take a deep dive uh, in, in your career, uh, uh, Devag. I mean, uh, I think I think you started uh, your career studying medical science, if I'm not wrong about it. Yeah, no, I mean, t- tell us, tell us more about that shift. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, uh, you know, like um, I was doing biotechnology, and um, you know, the first job that I got out of uh, college was in a brewery, so I used to make um, beer. Right. So uh, it, it, this was back in Chandigarh. And, uh, you know, like, uh, it didn't feel anything. It's like, okay, I did my graduation. Now I have to have a job. And like, job was just a necessity in my life. So then, then it was good paying job to, you know, like, uh, as much as it can. Uh, but one day I came back, um, you know, from work, I'm sitting, uh, what show do I watch? And I, you know, uh, stumbled onto Mad Men. I'm like, holy shit, people can actually, uh, you know, earn money through writing. I mean, this is what I wanted to do for the longest time. And then I did a little bit of research. Then, uh, you know, um, I, I looked, um, you know, like all the big agencies that were taken in the show, uh, the names that were taken in the show, I researched them, the work that they are doing. And I'm like, this is fascinating. This is like, I love writing. I love movies. And it's just coming together. Like, this is what I want to do. So I, yeah, so I, um, you know, applied to a small agency that was based in Chandigarh at that time. And I told them I wanted internship and um, I had to uh, need a good paying job to take an internship that wasn't paying well. Um, I remember my rent at that time uh, was around 10K and my salary was 15K. <laughs> and uh, so, so it was very difficult uh, once you get started. But uh, once you grow, once you show capability, the uh, everything that comes after that is also quite fast, right? So yeah, that is how I started, like the transition. It was from a TV show. Mm-hmm. But but as a uh, but as a skill, you know, I mean, what you are doing needs a lot of writing, as you as you mentioned, and all of us knows about it. So th- was this something that you all like you that you always enjoy doing? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have always enjoyed reading. I grew up in a, a, a like a hostel boarding where there wasn't a TV or, a, you know, a, a computer allowed, no phones allowed. Uh, so all I had was books, right, in the library. So I loved reading. Uh, my mom is a writer, so I had that writing influence. Uh, but, but uh, you know, writing and advertising writing is completely different world. You want to be willing to sell too. You want to be... Uh, someone who enjoys selling, someone who enjoys persuasion as well. So when I came into the advertising industry in the small uh, agency, I didn't come as a copywriter. I came as like an account manager. But over there, there was a uh, you know who, uh, there was a woman who uh, who was working um, in that agency, and she um, she worked for uh, you know fifteen years in Ogilvy. Now she wanted a quiet life, so she chose a small agency, and she was working there. Um, so she, like I used to grab this, like, you know, silly puns and jokes and everything in the office at that time. And she told me, bro, you should be a copywriter, uh, not, you know, not in service. I'm like, when someone with that excuse tells you, you should be a copywriter, you should check it out. Uh, so th- there's also this, this thing, right? Like you have to figure things out yourself. Um, there's a lot of information these days on the internet. There's a lot of courses. Um, you know, I'm also a part of it. I also uh, sometimes give. But there's everything that you want, you know, at, at the tip of your finger. If you search, you will going to get it. Uh, what happens is sometimes we get dependent on everything is available, every information, and we forget the joy of actually finding things out. So this is what I suggest people just, you know, find things out for yourself sometimes. You know, go research the agencies, the people who are working there, the kind of work they are doing. Everyone's not going to tell you how to do it. You have to figure things out yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, when she mentioned that you should be a copywriter, I'm sure she, she saw some trick. It, was it, was it the way you talk or, or maybe you used to participate in, in the projects or something? No, uh, I mean, she used to write the copy, uh, but, but, you know, like it was more like, uh, so how people say that great writing is also great thinking. Right? So, so when you're a writer, you know how to articulate your thoughts. 
So she's like, if if you can be, if you can be humorous, you can be a writer. Like if you have sense of humor, usually if you see writers, they have which sense sense of humor, right? So slowly, slowly start to help uh, her with some projects, you know, um, uh, and uh, yeah, that that was interesting. And but you 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 still aren't there. You write shitty copy, right? You you, uh, you write bad stuff, uh, but that doesn't mean that you know. Uh, that you're not getting it or anything. That just means that you're slowly getting into the industry. Uh, so, but but there was limited option there. And then I applied to an agency who wanted a writing role um, um, in Goa. So I said, okay, let's go for it. Let's apply. That's uh, where everything started. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, for I mean, uh, as, uh, I mean, as an individual, I think uh, I have uh, I knew about uh, you know I got to know about this field a little later in my career when I stepped into this you know design agency world. So uh, I mean, uh, it's so uh, it's like I mean, in, in a project, do how much do you think that uh, 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 co- you know copywriting is is important? And and lately, I think. A lot of brands like Zomato and you know uh, Swiggy are, are have been making an impact. Do do you think that like brands like these copywriting has made an impact out there, and it's also inspiring people to become a copywriter, or, or do you think it was always there? Uh of course it was always there, but uh, but um, you, you know like the cultural context was missing for a long time. What what Swiggy Zomato did was it made uh, like all the great ads. Uh, uh, like the copy, copy like a simple slate and a copy. So that style was missing for a long time. You know, when the social came out, if you see, uh, of course we had the billboards and everything, but people didn't look that much into it, right? But when social came out, we were constantly engaging with ads twenty four seven. It wasn't like that before. You see a holding, you look at it, you pass by. Okay, fine. That's there's a very small part of my life. But when social came, it's a big part of your life because you're constantly is looking at ads. And when when that erupted, the social erupted, most of the designs, most of the advertising, I'd say, was very visual led, right? Uh, and what Swiggy Zomato did was, okay, what? How about, you know, I I chuck the visual and just write a copy and see what happens. But they always included cultural context. Like you don't see ads that talks about, um, you know, samosa and all, right, all the time. But suddenly you're starting to see. And the best part is like, you know, the ads don't look like ads half of the time. But you also have to remember like as as great as it looks, it doesn't work for every brand, right? Uh, it, it has to work for Swiggy Zomato to constantly stay on the top of the mind because the product purchase that you're doing is instantaneous. Okay, uh, I like a Zomato ad to maybe I'll order for Zomato, you know, just to be... It's, it's So they constantly have to communicate with you. Uh, but when you're purchasing a product, that's like one crore. If you're purchasing a uh, product like Porsche, you wouldn't want to see something like that. You don't want to see a brand as aspirational as that top P twenty four seven. You know, you want to see some subtlety. You want to see, you know, like some class in that that ads. Okay, you know what? I exist. That's about it. It's a uh, you know. That's what they want to say. They want to say, bro, uh, what's your favorite gear, bro? What's uh, do you like a steering? It doesn't work for every brand. So as much as it looks great to, uh, you know, Swiggy's matter scene, great copywriting happens when you don't see much. Uh, so I always, uh, I am more inspired by brands like Nike or um, the early FedEx, right? Um, Porsche, the Porsche ads, Volkswagen ads, like the classic ads, because they don't see much. They're selling and they're not saying anything. So my uh, inspiration comes from those side. I have not very. I've never been too impressed by Swiggy Zomato ads. Maybe you know it's a matter of taste. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And look, what's uh, you know t- take you know this is this is where the limelight is. You know, for a normal people that know much about you know copywriting or maybe not in the industry. Uh, 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 you know, look forward to brands like, uh, you know, like Zomato. Uh, so, I mean, a couple of days I was having a chat uh, uh, with, uh, you know, with my friends and you were talking about, so in order to, you know, put yourself out there as a brand, it's very important to do good copywriting, you know, make make good uh, social media posts, things around that, good, make, make really good social me- media strategy. But, but for example, 
comes to you know something like a like a steel pipe you know something like a like a sarya you know i mean uh, or these uh, you know pvc pipes things like that do you think brands like this uh, you know should should uh, put themselves out there and uh, you know cuz cuz again uh, do you think are they i mean main idea is to make their product sell and uh, and in good copywriting and putting themselves on social media then they are reaching to the to, to the customer or uh, I, i just want to know your take on it so it's it's not about only reaching to the customer you're right like right? like if amuja semen stops advertising on social media how much impact do you think they're going to have nothing right it doesn't it doesn't affect them like one inch so this is what uh, you know one who i was talking to a client one sal and this is what i asked like why do you do like why are you interested in these campaigns making a film and um, you know although you don't need it you know your sales are great uh, why do you need it so this client said a very uh, very crucial thing he said uh, you know i i am i'm a person who is very much involved in sales okay uh, i have increased my sales one uh, you know almost 2.5 person this year which is a big number you know not a big percentage that you hear but it's big number in terms of money uh, right so when i go home what do i tell to my kid like i have increased 2.5% of the sales do you think he gives a damn do you think i got to give uh, a bunch of excel sheet to show to my kids no right i'm going to show him a film i'm going to show him a post that um, you, you know like the company has done that he'll chuckle to uh, right i, I want to show that we have engaged with people and they love our brand so at, at, like brands they don't just do to sell so uh, they do because they're proud of the brand right uh, you know someone or someone working at phenolex they don't need to sell pipes on social media but you know they have a, a whatsapp group they have friends and if you are someone who's working at phenolex and you have a friend who saw a social media post and chuckled like, hey this is nice it's okay let me send it to uh, you know vijay and uh, show him that hey, like your company is doing some great stuff right sometimes it is as simple as that that many of the critics miss on linkedin they say oh social media why do you need to do brands don't need to do it these brands don't give a damn you know like what do you think because they're not doing to sell they're already selling right they need they do it because they're proud of the brand they do it because they believe in the brand and it increases the moral of the people who are working for the brand and also the consumers moral that you know what yeah i mean like they're not in my day to day life but okay they're funny you know something sometimes the answer is as simple as that yeah it makes sense honestly i didn't uh, think they and uh, if it that makes sense or not cuz a lot of times they are very finicky about spending money on social media and things like that you know so and, and again do you think that suddenly it has be- become very competitive uh, uh, you know and uh, Do 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 you think that uh, uh, I mean a brand can can thrive with great, uh, without uh, great copywriting? Uh honestly, it depends on the brand. I would say, uh, you know, like social media now has become like it's just become too easy and too lazy. To be very honest, like if you see, it's like a bunch of topical post and moment marketing. What does it do? Like you know, uh, it, it says okay. a client says you have to come up with 10 ideas and out of the six ideas are uh, topical uh, posts and uh, you know moment mark so there's no range to think out right you already have uh, like six briefs that are telling you do exactly like this look at references look at what other people are doing and cut paste design and make something out of it so great thinking is available because your thinking are already limited you already have a guard rail okay topical mana yeah moment you have to do So it's very it's a very lazy uh, I would and this is again my opinion right I think it's a very lazy direction that creators are going in these days rather just think of a idea that is not um a, you know uh not you know pick up your phone day <laughs> like uh, think of an idea that you know ha- hasn't been done before right uh, so so we have to like as creators we have to make social media more uh impactful and and that is what we are doing at talented as well right um so compared to like we are we don't call ourselves a social media agency or digital agency it's a 
mix of mainline and um, you know social. So the philosophy of talented is social media, is, uh, like social advertising, isn't what you do on social advertising. Social media advertising is what ends up in social media, right? So so nowadays again, the Zomatics example, the boards, the holdings, they are just holdings, but they ended up in social media. Uh, even even the, uh, the the Swiggy horse thing, right? People spotted a horse and the Swiggy delivery man. And then Swiggy took that horse and the delivery man put in the app. So now you there is there's a change happening where people are realizing there's a gazillion social media posts. We don't want to do that. You want to do something interesting. You want to start a conversation. And it doesn't have to be advertised. We can do the advertising and voting. But how that advertising ends up with social media, what the conversation is going to be, that is where the creativity has to come. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I mean that is how I see things going moving forward. Like, peep, peep, there's there's just too much clutter, um, and uh, in, uh, and again, like some people, some brands got to do it, and some brands do it differently. Uh, Nike, you will see, like they are on social media all the time, but their brand collaboration of, with Tiffany is uh, now the brand coll- collaboration. I think it's a spec. I'm not sure with the Nike. Uh, is like it's a social conversation all over LinkedIn, Instagram, everywhere. But it's not a social media post. It's not a social media piece, uh, right? So, so I'm seeing how brands are transforming every day. Yeah, I mean, talking about collaboration, that's a, that's a that's a that's an amazing point. I think I growing up, I haven't been you know we we haven't been seeing a lot of cross collaboration. So now suddenly, I think the industry has become very open minded. Why do you think? that it, it's it's relevant and you know this collaboration makes sense uh, mainly because uh, we are me we are more in touch with our people right every feedback is extremely instantaneous uh, okay like if your voting was back but if your voting was bad in the 90s what is the worst thing that could have happened someone uh, would uh, you know stand near the voting and uh, near the billboard and Shao day, this is a bad ad. That's it, right? But in social media, that's not the case, right? You put up a post, you put up anything that is bad. Thousands of people have come together, cancel you, and actually drop your sales down. We talk, we talk so much about influence, and we don't talk about de influence. Uh, it's it's a huge uh, matter. Bud Light got de de influenced uh, recently. Uh, Cadbury Bonvita got de influenced recently. Uh, so so. Uh, it has its ups and downs to constantly start a conversation. So brands nowadays want to start a conversation piece with collaborations with like in the Nike, the Nike Tiffany, uh, uh, Tiffany that you saw, uh, uh, the collaboration, even uh, what Heinz is doing amazingly, you know, uh, the ketchup theft um, campaign. So these are great social conversation piece. They're not just saying, hey, buy our product. They're saying like, does it happen that uh, someone replaces the Heinz tomato, uh, you know, in the Heinz bottle, right? So, so they're doing that, but it has its ups and downs. The ups is that a lot of people join the conversation, and your brand becomes a part of uh, a person's life. If it's a part of a conversation, it's a part of life. So, the top of mind recall is extremely high, uh, and you make decisions these days based on how you like a brand. It's a social currency, it's a braggability, right? Uh, like, you wear clothes from Zara, where people ask, what do you wear in Zara, H&M? So these have become social currencies in our life as opposed to how things were before. Like, I have bought an IKEA, t- uh, you know, table. I think yours behind, uh, that is also IKEA, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Right? yeah, that's IKEA. Yeah, so I could have easily, uh, you know, rented or gotten a furniture from elsewhere. But it is a social currency. I like IKEA, you know, as a brand. Uh, you know, if someone asks, is it in an IKEA? I like saying it is an IKEA. So it is a social, uh, you know, currency. It's a braggability. So that is what brands want to achieve now. We did, before this, we had it with the cars. We had it with fashion. Uh, but now we have it with a simple furniture, right? Uh, so that is the beauty of what is happening. But there's a dangerous slide to it as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, make, it makes sense. Uh, so, 
So, I mean, let's talk about, I, I, I try to talk about, you know, reaching down when it comes to skill set or even as a, as a, as an agent, you know, when I talk to agency founders, I, I always ask them this question about niching, niching down. And, and I got again, sometimes again, uh, you know, answers, answers like maybe for Indian market, niching down too much doesn't make sense. Uh, because our market's still growing. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, it's, it's never, I think, a, a, a right or a, or a wrong answer. But as a, but as an, as an individual, as a, as a copywriter, uh, do, do you think niching down makes sense that, okay, I, I think I'm a person who would lo- love to write around food, FNB industry. Uh, okay. Maybe I'd love to, you know, work around, uh, uh, consumer electronics. What, 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 do, do you think that's something which is, which is, which makes sense that being a, being a, uh, around copywriting? Yeah. No, so, so see how people see niche. And then even copywriters who are joining is narrow it down to one. But that is not what niche is, right? Niche is broaden it, right? Uh, for example, right, if you're just, just a copywriter, you're going to earn a certain amount of money. But if you're a copywriter who knows data, you're going to earn a lot of money, uh, right? Uh, if, if you're a copywriter who uh, knows visual design really well, you could earn a lot of money. So when we talk about niche, it's not like, hey, I just want to write for cars, right? It's it's usually about, hey, you know what? I can write about cars and I can also think about the design of the car, you know, design of how things are going to come. That's what niche is, right? Um, basically, but it's not about the market. See, the, the most... Um, problematic thing is people get into the industry and go in niche. Uh, you know, like, you don't know what you style. Even I don't know what my, when you start, you make a lot of mistakes and you make a lot of successes. Unless you do that, how would you know that you're good at writing ads for cars? How would you know that you're... So, I was writing for a very, very English copy-heavy uh, brands earlier. Right? Um, Porsche, about, um, you know, all these uh, English-heavy brands. Uh, now I am writing for a lot of brands that require Hindi. And I thought I don't have it in me. I, I don't enjoy it or something. But I'm enjoying it now and, you know, trying to kill it now. So now I'm like, okay, maybe I can do this too. So as a writer, we should be able to write about everything. But we have to add a skill on top of a skill. And that is how the niche will build. Um, and the style, it comes way later. You know, the style people talk about doesn't come in the, like in seven, you know, in four or five years of working. You have to work a lot. You have to produce a lot of work. You have to fail. If you don't fail, you don't know what you're bad at either. So then you improve that. Then you mismatch. Okay, maybe this is where I do. But I say, why Why find a niche? Why limit yourself? Why do, you, why do us writers and designers put so much guardrails onto ourselves, so much limitations? You know, I am good for this. No, but like you go to LinkedIn and B2B copywriter, B2B content writer. Like it's writing. You write in B2B. You can write in B2C. You can write in B2C. There's nothing called B2B copywriter. A copywriter is a copywriter. A copywriter can write B2B, right? Uh, so, so a great writer can write about anything because writing is a human exercise. It's about um, insights. It's about observations. Uh, if you can observe how a car moves through the street, you can observe how a employee talks during the water cooler conversation for your need to be camped, right? So you can write about anything if you can think about. But if you want, like what I call a niche is add an extra skill to what you can already do. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. You made it sound very simple. Uh, they were, uh, and uh, so, uh, see, I, I think, of course, storytelling is is important, you know, is very, very important. I mean, I think copywriting is storytelling, right? So, I mean, uh, do, do you think only by creating work, uh, you get better or, or is there some, you know, exercises or, you know, some techniques that you've been following, which, which has, you know, maybe has given you that edge over other, other people who are in the same game. What do you think is the, you know, your process or, 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 or uh, to, you know, do, to really pick, uh, you know, what, what you want to, you know, go, go convey with the, with the writing? Um. Uh, you know, uh, I, I cannot say if I, 
see the writing process is different for everyone and it works for everyone who is good at it um so but how how you reach to that process is very different um so i have i've again i've started into advertising by watching mad men so it's i have been interested in the old days of advertising since uh, so i study a lot of uh, references you know i as I, i look at ads i see i see how ads were done before um if if you see there was an ad uh, i think by david abbott where where he uh, you know like hung a car and put put a man underneath the car you know he was the car was hanging and there's a man lying underneath and his headline was something uh, if the welding isn't strong enough uh the car is going to fall on the right up that was a print dad right um uh, what is means that you know our car is so strong that the person that is writing the advertising for would be dead if it wasn't right so simple communication visual amazing visual it was i think it was called volvo um and and back to almost uh, 40 50 years later i see an ad uh, you know by uh, ether energy where there's an engineer sitting on top of a battery and having noodles and saying that if uh, that if i didn't trust this battery i would blow up you know uh, if uh, the, you know if i if I, if i didn't didn't trust this battery you're seeing what they did right the insight the human inside what worked in the eps is still working it's a, it's a, it's a it's a uh, process of terrific referencing the ad is no no copy it's a brilliantly built the ether energy one was great referencing okay They, re- they, didn- they didn't reference an ad, they referenced a communication. The communication that they referenced is, you know, when, like, trust, you know, like, the person who is making a product is trusting the product with life. That is the insight. And they've used it in the ad. So my process is to find these insights, you know, that has been done before. And see how we can, you know, do it in this day and age. Because, to be very honest, well, everything has been done. everything but not in every possible way right uh, so so it's very important for newcomers not to just see swiggy zomato done so but also see what fedex has done before or volkswagen has done before uh, what cadillac was writing uh, at that time what debus diamond because these people built cultures uh, you know like if if you go and propose your girlfriend for marriage you get down on one knee and open a diamond ring you think it 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 comes from nothing it comes from advertising bbus diamonds your uh, smart watch comes from the you know the, it's an advertising concept the caravan you see the, those caravan music uh, you know that saridam uh, saridam has the yeah 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 it's a, yeah that's a that's a great product placement man yeah yeah, yeah it's an advertising con- concept by leo bernard if i'm not wrong uh, right uh, so uh, all these the uh, like all these writers who came up with it is not writing at all and this thinking right so when when you go into copywriting and your first thing first uh, instinct is okay i'm going to write something clever it's not going to work if your first instinct i'm going to think something great and i'll see how i can articulate it doesn't have to be words it doesn't have to be writing it can be just a visual there was a uh, there was a writer called adrian holmes uh, who took a, had to make an ad for nike and michael jordan right and uh, you know his first drafts if you see is like long 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 headlines but at the end what he did was he took just a simple image of michael jordan doing a dunk and he wrote four uh, uh, elements on it uh, gravity zero jordan one that's it right so so when you're focused on writing writing you're not think oh i'm going to write a clever headline that's going to end up in dnd copy book and all no in the great thinking first and then see how the copy can support your thinking so adrian holmes uh, you know is is a brilliant writer to look at um, he he had to uh, advertise for a cream that uh, you know vanishes blemishes you know so he took a print ad where it's just blank and you say uh, you see it's written vanishing cream that's it you don't need <laughs> like to write right to make a great idea so that what copywriting is it's great thinking Yeah I mean I love that part where you mentioned about how to use a reference you know because uh, you know I mean because I've been seeing a lot of people just reinventing the wheel you know and, yeah. and adding more chaos uh, uh, on 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 the on, on social media so so yeah I need mean, I, I I love your approach 
Yeah, but, but you're seeing what they're doing. No? They they are trying to replicate a format, not a thinking. Uh, so so you know, like the memes with cat that uh, Swiggy is doing. Okay, well, then like um, mera to yeh ho gaya, mera to wo gaya, and certain brands. Oh, let's do this format. Their first instinct is to copy a format. Okay, let's Swiggy has used these cats. Let's use it on a social media post, and let's write a copy that goes with our brand. No, <laughs> look at the like. If you have to reference reference. A thinking, not not a format, because formats get old. You have to come up with again new formats, and people don't remember formats, right? You don't remember what was trending a year back. I'm I'm pretty sure you don't remember what what was trending uh, a year back. But then Zomato's ad for the Independence Day, um, we're not accepting orders anymore. In 1947, you know, yeah, you remember yeah. that? Why? If you see, Economist did a very similar ad in the 80s. Uh, that said, uh, you, you know, management uh, like uh, I don't read the Economist. Management trainee is spotted. <laughs> you see, they rough is the thinking. Uh, you know, so so formats get old. Thinking stays fresh. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's. I think you have to be a uh, uh, you know. Uh, an observer to really understand, you know, to maybe I I don't know to maybe really pick pick what you want to convey. So so I I, I think that that's also a skill that uh, you know which is important even even to designers. You know, you should be you know you should be a, a, a person who is constantly absorbing, um, absorbing and observing. Let's say. Let, let's I think in in our last uh, in our last call you talked about you know balancing unsexy work you know and not getting uh, demotivated towards what you know what you want to do so this is this is like the sexy side of what we've been talking about yeah you you writing something which is which is every period and impact uh, so I mean what 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 do you uh, what do you uh, think about that how do you balance that. Uh, nothing. You just have to have a thick skin, <laughs> you know. Uh, but so, so, so. Look, the reason is a lot of us are in this profession, um, uh, not because of an idealistic vision. We are not going to change the world, uh, right? So, so I, I see this thing that we are not rocket scientists. Uh, you know, we see this all the time in advertising. Someday, you know, I like to think that rocket scientists get get up in the morning and say we are not advertisers. And they can't be, because we have fun. Uh, rocket scientists cannot have fun. Um, if they have fun, the world blows up, right? <laughs> <laughs> but 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 we we can have fun. So I take, tell people like, don't take the job too seriously, but take it sincerely, right? So so what I mean by that is, uh, uh, you know, like when we get a brief that we don't enjoy, uh, you know. Uh, and we have this vision, you know, I'm going to do great stuff. I'm going to write a film, I'm going to write a coding. The truth is, it might happen. And it might not. And that's okay. Uh, your job, you are not an artist. You are a, like how in Mad Men, Don says, you're not an artist. You solve problems. Our problem is we take it in a very idealistic way. We are doing stuff out of the world, unimaginable, unimaginable stuff. You're changing the world. We are not. We're just selling shit. Let's be comfortable with that. Great, we have great advertising concept, but if you see, those are done by people who are way ahead in their career, and they did it that, and doesn't mean that you're going to do it either. And that's completely fine. Um, first, we have to get out of our own bubble that we advertisers have, and uh, we have a lot of ego. You know, you see a lot of creative directors and people in this business harbor a lot of ego. Because it comes from the ego of an artist, uh, and ego of an artist that puts the art in art gallery has the same ego of a creative director. <laughs> okay, our problem is we are not artists; we are selling it. So if you don't have an idealistic vision, if you actually enjoy your work, you know what? Okay, I have worked for a, a, a hair oil brand that I didn't enjoy at all. I hated every moment of it, but I thought, okay, I'm not gonna write. You know, a D and D copy book, copy ad kind of thing for a, a hair oil brand. But what I can do over here is let's see if I can sell it. You know, if I can actually sell it. So my mind went to do okay. Let's chuck out the creativity. Let's see how objectively I can sell it. 
bang, 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 bang on their, uh, you know, like problems, solutions. So I started to think like, oh, this is a project that I'm treating like where I'm only focused as a sales. So when you give goals to boring project by yourself, you do better. Uh, if you have a very boring B2B project, don't go into creativity. Think this is a this is a uh, this is a place where I can perfect my craft. Okay, it's a business thing that you're writing. So where can I put right punctuations? How can I make uh, you know this shorter, 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 concise? Let's treat it as an exercise, as a challenge. So I tell this to people every time. Every time you get unsexy work, see the downside, and there's a lot of downside. But see one upside. Find one upside and make it into a challenge, and keep doing it. Uh, that being said, we do need uh, great projects. We do need where we can be creative because at the end of the day, we are creators, right? So if you are a writer who is getting an sexy work, uh, since a year, since two years, and no sexy work, move on to something better, uh, right? There should be a balance. It's okay if you do one sexy work twice a year, the rest of the year is on sex, it's fine. But you should get a chance to do a sexy work. And you don't have to be hungry for credits and have to own it. You have to be a part of it. If someone is doing sexy work, hey bro, how can I help you with it? You know? So, but we, we do need that. And if you're not getting that, move on to something better. Yeah. You know, you make sense. I mean, I think that's, that's the, that's a hard talk that you want to do. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so. I, you you mentioned about you know uh, uh, writing a copy which is which can be on the BND book right so I think I think this is not a good approach you know if you're picking up a project and you are you are you are you know you you uh, beforehand you are you know you're considering that okay I'm gonna write that copy which goes there yeah I don't think if it's a, that's a healthy approach to have you know because I think you've been a part of such awards you know shortlisted in in those spaces so. So I mean, in uh, for those projects, you were you had that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna write a call, you know, r- write something which is which is gonna win awards or something, or or because I think to to the least expected project. So, it's like we have to, like at the end of the day, we are creators, uh, right? And um, that you have to aim for it to write a great copy, but you cannot always write. It because of the projects that you're doing, uh, but but uh, you know I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I lie. No, no worry, no worry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question once? Then yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, when when you talk about you know uh, getting your your copy into the D and D book, right? I mean, I I don't think if that's a good approach, right? Because you can't and that okay, I'm, my copy is gonna be right there, and you know you are working o- o- on it uh, towards that. Uh, and I think, and sometimes it happens to the least ex- expected projects. So, I mean, how does it work with you when you shortlist yourself into a, an award or something? I mean, you you got to aim for it to be to to be very honest, right? So, I was telling that a lot of uh, creators they have intelligence, creators craft everything, but they lack that certain amount of arrogance. You need that certain amount of arrogance if you want to do better work. Um, the the reason is uh, you get better projects that way. Um, and and if you don't get the chance to keep showing that how good you are, you can do with writing on a social media, you can do uh, with writing a book, or writing notes. So you have to keep on showing your writing capability if you're not getting that chance. Um, the truth is 90% of the time you won't get a chance to do something great before five, six years into the industry. We'll be doing a lot of uh, unsexy work. Um, but here's the thing about sexy work. Once you do it and once it hits you're gonna have it coming 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 right you're gonna have a lot of people who wants that thing uh and and again because clients also want to do great work right they want to do sales but they all also want to do great work uh you know uh, and and you're going to be able to do that but it's going to take time your short will come uh but when it comes you have to identify it and you have to, you know, like you have to uh, keep shooting it. So what I say is, even though you don't write, get to write, you know, a, a DND copy book ad, see that the thing that you're writing, the most boring thing, it has to be perfect. It has to be the most perfect boring thing, right? So when I was writing for the hair oil brand, 
you know no one gave a damn the the account people didn't give a damn uh, i i also in an idealistic way I didn't give a damn uh, a lot of people around me didn't give a damn it's just a hell it brand uh, but i i always make sure that my commas are in the right place my full stops are in the right place okay it makes sense what i'm writing um, the captions aren't boring with a thousand exclamation marks so i need to show that i do the uh, cindy stuff right once you do the boring stuff right you got to do the great stuff right but if you don't have that sense of craft if you don't have the sense of perfection in the most mundane shit you're not going to have it when you're handed diamonds right uh so there's a line that i've read uh, by an advertising agency which says the stones in your shoe uh, are uncut diamonds right uh so so that's a beautiful line that that is what it says that yeah. everything is as a stone at first but if you keep the craft going you're going to eventually land on the something great because you cannot help but to write something great you cannot help it uh people who are truly creative they cannot help but be creative all the time uh you know that is that is our curse and that is our blessing we cannot stop uh right and uh, yeah i mean that is that is how it see things yeah i mean very 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 inspiring thought uh so i mean uh, again uh, all of us are you know all of us are just uh, you know watching this uh, this ai tamasha around us and you know how this is the uh, you know i it, i think linkedin is when the that those such yeah. was sent you know uh, would you think you can do uh, how you can um, like a lead generation machine out of ai and uh, and i think a lot of and casually people are saying that okay copywriters gonna be replaced by ai i mean it's already been replaced by ai things like that what's your take on that and so, for for someone uh, who who's maybe passionate about it it can be very scary for them so what's your take on that my take on that is a new uh, agency in a uh, design agency in delhi that wasn't too good uh, and i knew lander and fetch in delhi um and when canva came out that design agency that wasn't too good that shut down in within 20 days and lander and fitch is still standing right uh ai is going to take jobs but it's going to take jobs that aren't doing much to be very honest uh we 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 do need people who can write thousand jargons and great emails ai can do that their jobs will be placed uh it that ai is going to take out mediocrity to be very honest but canva didn't take design jobs right they took design jobs but you know the pe- people who would put some vectors and some text and call it design those jobs uh they took the thing is ai itself people who are building it they will people don't realize this they will be in a huge loss if they take, start taking out jobs if if they wanted to take jobs ai would have been a b2b uh model canva would have been a b2b model they don't want to take my job they want me to use ai that is how they're going to make money if they take my job who's going to pay them some companies but that's it and but people on the higher ups they don't even have time to put prop- prompts because they don't know what prompts to put because putting a prompt is also thinking if they could have done the thinking part my job wouldn't have existed in the first place right so <laughs> i say okay ai is going to take my job okay write a prompt write a brilliant prompt and like write the ether energy ad as a prompt you have to write an ad you have to know your thinking right <laughs> that is that is the thing most people don't know what to think sure it can write an ad but what are you going to put that comes from thinking So yeah AI, AI is there to support us AI is, uh, is going to take out the mediocrity and make the great better right that is how i see it but it is a business model that is there to make our jobs easier uh, to make our jobs better and that's why they have a paying model if they didn't if they wanted to take our jobs they wouldn't have that in the coming years 80% of the people that are going to pay to AI are corporate and come the traitors <laughs> we are we are the biggest market they don't want to take our jobs they don't they want to be in our jobs so they are the same yeah you uh you make sense so and do do you think that uh 
I mean, when you you talked about mediocrity, uh, do, don't you think that uh, already? I mean, the sad part about our industry is the mediocrity. Uh, I think because even if they they are just a step away from creating something great, they you know they decide to set up with it way less. So so do you think that ecosystem will need AI more, or 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 uh, do you think that uh, you know they 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 would still need people? And and also, I mean, adding one more thing to it is is are you using AI or or are talented? Um. I'm not using AI as much. I know people, some people who are doing because um, the projects I am on, the stuff I'm doing is very different from what I was doing at Shabang. Um, now, now it's more 360 degree campaign and uh, uh, you know films, stuff like that. I think when people bring this AI versus writers um, comment also how it's going to make our life easier, uh, they forget one very important part about artists, designers, writers. We actually love doing it, right? We actually love writing more. We have no problem. We don't want to replace that part, uh, right? So I enjoy the writing process. I don't want to use AI. I know it's going to cut down my time because I enjoy sitting and writing. Uh, so I haven't used it uh, yet. Uh, so, but but suppose I have to write, uh, let's say like a, you know, like like a long email explaining my idea why this idea is good. And there is not something I particularly want to do. I'll ask AI to do it. Um, I I sometimes use AI for insight searching for things I don't know. Uh, for example, in Iceland, what are some of the cultural things that I can harp on and take advantage of in manifest? So I'll ask that to AI. Things I don't know, but things I know I'm going to do it myself. And yes, mediocrity is a big problem, mostly because people don't know great taste. So the people don't have great taste in our guys. Um, most newcomers, uh, you, you know, that's why this is so important to look into the past. This it's so important to look at great advertising and build your taste. Once you build your taste, you know the stuff you're doing is mediocre. And if you're comfortable with that, all good. You know, it's all fine if if you're mediocre. If you're fine with the mediocrity, that's all fine. There's no wrong in it, I would say. Uh, you treat a job like a job. Uh, some of us treat a job like a life. Some of us treat a job like a job. And that's completely fine. Um, but yeah, it has gotten... Mediocrity existed then. Mediocrity exists now. The problem is, there was social media. It's so much of it. <laughs> and we're seeing so much of it all the time. Um, but there's good stuff happening. People are saying advertising is dead and all that thing. I think there's more advertising now than ever. I think there's more great creators now uh, than ever. Um, you know, let's look look at the amount of films we're doing every year. Yeah. Uh, so, so I I am very hopeful about the industry. I think more ads are going to come. It's going to be more personalized. Uh, they're going to be great taste. And because mediocrity exists, people know what's great. So, I support mediocrity. Please do mediocrity because. As long as you do mediocre, people are know gonna know the great stuff too. It gets difficult when all stuff is great, and it, that's great. But if Adidas has a great ad, and if Nike has a great ad, which one are you gonna choose? Right. So mediocrity makes the life of a consumer pretty easy. They know the great stuff. They know the bad stuff. It's as easy as that. Yeah. You know, makes sense. I mean, the uh, uh, very, very, very well explained, man. Uh, uh, so- uh, I, I really like your your mindset uh, towards this. So, yeah, I mean, let let's just talk about uh, one 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 last thing. Uh, uh, you you got you got, you recently got this award of a copywriter of the year by Solo. Congrats for that. How did that happen? I mean, uh, I mean, what were you doing right that you uh, you know got 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 that award? And I I know that a lot of this is a uh, part of a vanity, but I I think it still it still makes sense. I mean. You know, I think uh, the creators need validation, right? So, how did that happen? You know, with that, uh, you know, what, what, what were the those things you were doing, right? Uh, I, I think it's a lot of people see it as an award that you know, uh, uh, with best copyright. It's not best copywriting award. It's a uh, copyright of the year award. Uh, so, what does it mean is that the impact you do with writing, it doesn't necessarily have to be the best. Uh, but I, I, you know, like I was talking to a creative director who then was working with uh, uh, 
then so no connect um but, and now he has his own stuff um he was telling that uh, bro i i belong to a certain community and i'm seeing uh, and in that certain community certain people are not allowed to talk about sex you know on social media anyway and i'm seeing all of a sudden they're making spec ads about condoms you know they're talking about sex so what 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 happened is people didn't see it as an advertising thing that was happening they saw it as a creative expression um uh, and it is a right and a wrong because a lot of advertising people got pissed hey, this is not advertising what mediocre and this and that they, they don't understand the fact that they are not trying to make an ad they're just trying to be creative they want to show their creative prowess uh and and uh, he was telling me i'm uh, like uh, you know i've also seen chartered accountants make ads uh, i'm seeing doctors make ads uh you know i'm seeing software engineers make ads uh what i got is not to, what i got is me a lot of people interested in this and copywriting in general uh, so i think um and and we need that right like what what else do we have some films um you know to show our kids but if your kid says one day i want to be a copywriter advertise and not a pilot and a doctor <laughs> right then we have done our job right and uh, yeah so so the entire thing that happened with the spec ads movement um and everything i think that was one right that i i told them you don't need an agency or you don't need a brand you need to work for in order to be creative you just you can go ahead and just make it and the spec ad concept existed since the 60s but people use it to build portfolio um and linkedin is like an online platform now they're using it to you know show their creativity uh, so that was one thing that went right and also if you see uh, even though i do some courses even though i'm talking to you i make sure i write ads right it's not like i'm just doing courses it's not like i'm just talking about copyright i'm i am i am also putting myself in a position to feel right uh all the words and courses but i'm also putting out ads okay this can be a crap ad but i'm putting out putting it out anyway right so i'm allowing myself to uh, feel in that regard so i am coming down uh, like i i am meeting people in the i am saying i'm doing the same thing as you are. there's nothing special in it. uh right so i think that is some people go in a very idealistic way no i'm not going to do this i'm just going to teach you teach you teach you and you know i'm the master and all i'm not maybe or maybe not you know, but i'm going to come and make ads with you too and i can feel you too so i think that that builds a lot of genuinity uh and that builds a lot of uh, uh, uh you know like trust um when when uh, you do that so i think that that was the right stuff to do yeah yeah you makes that uh, you you're doing it pretty well uh, they work uh so all right i mean uh, what's what's uh, uh, what's what's coming up i mean tell us something about uh, you know your new future and how things are happening with talented uh, and i i've been seeing a lot of uh, you know impact out there about this new agency it was give us some sneak peek about what's what's to come uh we're doing a lot of interesting projects and uh, uh i have this kind of uh for there you know in the shoot process and everything uh but but uh, uh, what 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 talent is trying to do what we we are trying to do is um our focus is very simple like how you know founder or co-founders and everyone says um create incredible work if you put your goal in creating one incredible work a year it's going to do beautiful result for you so my focus here is to do that one incredible work um so what's great about this place is we do a lot of proactive ideas and we think we're going to figure it out we don't have a brand but let's uh, you know if we do have a brand but we create idea we're going to figure out a brand um so that is what we're doing plus um everyone is trying to find new or creative devices right over here we end up we we don't want to just make a film um and and put some music and that's about it we want to see what we can do with photography um we want to see what we can do with ai you know mid journey you know uh we we want to see what we can do with origamis we want to see what we can do with campaigns uh you know we want to see what we can do with glass art design uh you know so we are we are 
uh, 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 figuring out new creative spaces that can be uh, an advertising concept, uh, right? And not going with what's already out there. So, so that is what's it's exciting about talented and dog. Yeah, it's been almost two months now, and it's been it's been insane. I love the work that I'm doing. Uh, finally, like set and write script down. It's it's an uh, it's beautiful experience. Yeah. Uh, sounds very exciting and uh, all the best they were and uh, thanks again for hopping onto the podcast uh, i hope to see you so yeah yeah thank thank you thank you for being such an amazing host like uh, so candid so well spoken so you know it's it's not every day that you have a um, actual good conversation like that doesn't feel like a podcast it feels more like a conversation when you when you when it feels starts to feel like an interview you you're a lot more profound with the thoughts. Yeah, cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs>